Hey, welcome to Living the Next Chapter. Great to have you with me again today. Hope you're doing well. Hope your week's going well. Uh, yeah, thank you for being here. It's so great. I, the podcasting community is so amazing, and I find great people by doing interviews and reaching out and listening to other podcasts. I had the chance to come on today with Eric Maynard, and Eric has his own podcast, The Author Blurb, and we're almost like doing the exact same thing. And we've even shared the same guests, which is amazing to see our guests moving around to other podcasts as well. And you're thinking, why would you be promoting another podcast like yours? And that's exactly what podcasting is about. It's about working together and building each other up and supporting other podcasters. And again, working towards the same goal of helping authors share their story. And that's what we're doing here, living the next chapter. And this is the type of guy Eric is. When we kind of got together, had a pre-interview chat about him coming on and talking about his own books and having him as a guest instead of hosting, big change for him. Uh, he says, Dave, can you send me your stuff? I'm going to put your stuff on my website. So if you go to authorblog.com and check it out, there's a link to us living the next chapter. And he's also went a step further and said, I'm going to send out a message to some of my past guests that I think would be good for your show and see. And within probably 25 minutes, I had my first contact from one of Eric's past guests. So right there. Okay, so like that's what podcasting is about, people. is about working together, all working together. Again, that whole thing about the tides raising all ships. That's what, that's what it's all about, right? So thank you, Eric, for being on the podcast. Thank you for your support. Go over and check out all the information in the show notes for Eric's books, his podcast, his website. And if you've been a past guest on my show and you're interested, please go check out Eric's podcast and continue sharing your books over on his podcast as well. Eric here on the podcast, and he's going to open up just telling us a little bit, a little snippet from the podcast about about his show and why he does what he does here on Living the Next Chapter. It's Eric Maynard. Thanks. Well, just kind of like your show, it's all about the conversation, about the story, about what's behind it about learning what people are trying to get out, their stories. And what I do is all about connecting readers and, their, and the authors. The technical side of it doesn't matter. I know some people like talking about it, but for me, it's all about, basically it's an advertisement that you're doing for free. Where you have an interview, you're discussing your book, you can take clips from the video, you can do whatever you want with it. And yeah, it's all about connection about making that that readership that author the writing community making it all stronger and i feel like that's what author blurb does so if anyone wants to come on the show the website's easy to find it's authorblurb.com and there's even a little tab that says become a guest and if you want you can go through and view the profiles that other authors have made that they've put on there. You can listen to the podcast on the website or find where to listen to it. So you can get a feel of the show. The show's in India and all over the world. So the show's everywhere. Welcome to the podcast. I have a fellow podcaster an author extraordinaire. <laughs> and he's with me today. Eric is with me. Eric has written a trilogy three crime thriller books he is the host of author blurb the podcast so much to talk about and he is a kind and genuine very generous person and i'm so happy to have him here eric welcome to the podcast well i'm definitely happy to be here like i was telling you before i've been binging your podcast <laughs> so you have three podcasts i've binged so far been binging so far There's only three more to go i'm telling you i mean <laughs> You have a list going. It you have more podcasts going than most people have books. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, like it's like a tattoo. You have one, you need another <laughs> one, and another one. Um, but you, you're a podcaster as well, and I really enjoy your show. The author blurb is amazing. You've got some really great guests on there that I'm so happy, and we've shared some guests too. I'm so oh, yeah. great to see that that we've had have some the same in people. And I'm expecting quite a few more to be coming to you as well. So, because like I said, I love your show just as much as you seem to like mine. So 
I'm definitely hoping that more of my guests have come over to you as well, which they're great people. The authors I've gotten a chance to talk with on the author blurb or author blurb podcast is an amazing group of people. And I'm not trying to promote my show overly too much, but oh, look, go ahead, please. Oh yeah. But I mean, in all truth, the one great thing I find about most authors is they just have this story that they want to tell. Yeah. And most of them are excited. They have that energy, that fun little information that they just can't help but want to tell other people. And that's why one, I think I ended up started writing and two, why I enjoy talking with people about my book, about their books. And it doesn't help that every now and then I get a free signed copy of their books, which right. is also why I keep building book sh bookshelves. Yeah. That's great. So when did you start the podcast and why did you start it? I actually started it, uh, I want to say back in February or March okay. of this year, 2022. And it was just, I was sitting there and I'm an independent author for my three books I have out now. And there's only so much marketing you can do. And with the extent of using like Amazon, BookBub, Facebook ads, all these different things in social media to try to get your name out there, it's extremely overwhelming. And it's just to the point of, I think in one month I spent testing out one ad, $150 and no sales from it. Wow. That really stinks. Yeah. And you just kind of sit there and go, there has to be a better way. And one thing I found is podcasting allows people to find the authors. It allows people to not have to spend money to most shows. You don't spend money to get on mm -hmm. and it's out there forever. You can use the information, use the show to get, on your website, on all these different things. And I felt that it would be nice to offer that tool to other authors and bring attention to them and not to be selfish, but also to bring some attention to myself and my yeah. books, because of course I want to sell my books. Yeah. But it, it's kind of that whole thing is I felt the need that people need to be heard. People need to connect to the readers because there are a lot of craft podcasts out there where, and I said craft yeah. with a F T e at the F end. Yeah, yeah. So where a lot of people listen to like your show, JF Penn, all these different writing shows, they talk about how they write about mm -hmm. how they are focused on how they got from point A to point B. They're outlining experience if they're pantsers or discovery writers all that stuff and i wanted something that would be just for the authors to reach out to the writers because a lot of authors are other are also heavy readers mm. i mean i can't tell you how many books i've gone through thanks to audible and different audiobook services just because one time is limited between everything. I mean, full-time job, podcast, two kids that yeah. I think are trying to kill me at times <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. everything else. So there had to be another option and that's how the podcast came to be. Awesome. Yeah. And it's, it's a, again, for those listening to us right now, you got to go over, we'll put links in the show notes, but you got to go over and check out Eric's podcast because it is so well done and the guests are again, outstanding. So mm -hmm. if you're, if you love writing or you love reading, you're an author. You need to get on Eric's show, first of all. <laughs> um, and like I have, I think, 115 episodes now in eight months. And so it's amazing who you can meet having a podcast and people that maybe you wouldn't have an opportunity to talk to or their their billable hours are out of your price range to sit right. down for an hour and spend time with these people. They're so willing to come on the, on your podcast share their journey, make connections with you. And it's so amazing to have this forum to kind of build a bridge with other authors. So having you on my podcast 
again, is a big win for me. I'm so happy to have you here. When you started writing, you have a trilogy of books. Did you did you know on book one, chapter one, that this would be a trilogy? Or did it just sort of happen that these turned into those three books together? You know, the first book, and this is kind of a weird setup. So in the trilogy, the first book in the series is Bearman, A Road of No Return. Okay. Then there's Country Secrets, and then a collection of short stories about what happens after Country Secrets in Aftermath. I wrote Country Secrets first. Oh, (laughs) I like this. Okay. So what ended up happening was I'm originally from Ohio, born, raised, but I've traveled the country, was used to being all over the country, or at least America and parts of Canada. But in my travels, I always wrote migrated back to Ohio because that was my home base. I guess you could say all my friends, everybody was there. Well, about 10 or so years ago when everything just kind of went down the drain for me, I was looking for a job and found a job out here in DC area, the DMV. So as I was out here, it was just hard because it was an eight hour drive or a couple hundred dollar airfare t- ticket. And, you know, I was in my mid to late twenties, cash wasn't really overflowing and I wasn't traveling back to Ohio just to go see a couple of friends and have a few beers. Yeah. So because I didn't have that connection anymore, I started writing because I was so used to, you always tell stories, you would have fun and you just kind of played around. So as I was sitting down one evening it was after work i was couldn't find anything good on tv and i'm like you know i have a story i want to write so i just started having a few beers then (laughs) occasionally having a glass of bourbon and writing country secrets where it started off as i wanted to say what if a alternative life happened for me so back when i was 18, 17 years old, I was into drugs. I was into doing all sorts of things and I could have easily have gotten into a lot worse of a situation than the things I've done because I've seen that happen with the people I grew up with, with people I've known, they've got into dealing drugs. They got into all sorts of stuff. People don't really think about the country life as a crazy drugs and violence and prostitution and all this stuff. But a lot of things happen out in the country that is just kind of an odd situation to have happen, at least from most people's perspective. Mm -hmm. So I set the book in Ohio in my, my home area. So my home area, like my hometown used to be a flashing red light, but I guess it dwindled down enough that the flashing red light went away. (laughs) <laughs> so now it's just a town of stop signs. Uh, <laughs> so it's a quiet, sleepy town, yeah. fantastic town to grow up in, at least when I did it. And I started writing and found that story just grew and became one thing to another. And I'm what you would call a pants or a discovery writer, because once I let the story go, I started incorporating elements from my personality elements from a gentleman that I used to know who after he passed away, I went back and edited and put him, his personality into a lot of it into the main character because it was my way of bringing him to be with me, I guess, because he was kind of a close friend, very enjoyable. He's somebody that I felt had a lot of information and literally I would talk to for almost every day to every other day and we'd work our problems through and he was an older gentleman but fun to talk with full of information and after all that i kept going to where it ended up scott behrman in country secrets developed a drug empire was dealing had all sorts of criminal elements going on he had connections to a New York mob and 
obviously it's very fan fantasy or not fantasy, but fiction Mm -hmm. because none of that was anywhere close to what I've done. Yeah. But I did take elements of things that I grew up and saw and put into the book. So there are some truths to what happened that you'll see in the book. And then after I finished country secrets and realized that I felt like I really enjoyed the book, I wanted to write more. So I sat down and I started thinking about what else I wanted to write next. And there was a couple things that just, I felt was open, open ended. And so once I realized that and had some people come back to me and ask me questions about, well, what happened here? Or this seems like there, there's a story behind it. It developed me starting to write the Bearman Road of No Return, which goes into how he got into into the drug area, how he started developing his empire, how he made the connections to the New York mafia, all these things. And it just kept exciting me. Then I took a break for a little bit and I'm like, you know, I was watching a, um, it was like after the fact kind of show where what happened to these people, almost like a, after the music kind of, I don't know if you remember those shows. Yeah. But I started thinking, you know, what happened to all these people after country secrets? After that, I started writing aftermath and the one fun fact that I love about the cover on aftermath is if you look at it, Mm -hmm. that is an actual apple tree in my mom's front yard. (laughs) I have it up on my screen as you're talking. (laughs) Really? Okay. That's it. Really? So that is set in my home, literally my hometown where my mom lives. I took, she sent me a picture of her apple tree and I just started filtering and messing around with some photo edits and like, you know, this could be a cover and it felt fitting after the country country field in the background with the, yeah. the tree being strapped up and all this. Yeah. That's amazing. I love to hear the behind the scenes stuff that you, when you look at a cover and you're like, how did you get that? Yeah, that's really, I like that. Yeah. I ended up making all my own covers and, Ended up learning how to do some graphic design software just simply so I could do it because, well, I found that it's better to take the time to learn how to do it so I can do all of them myself instead of paying somebody else because, well, it's expensive to get a book published at times and to do it right, I should say. So take me back to when your first book arrives to your house, the first copy, you have it in your hands. It's the first time you've ever done a published book. How does that feel as an author? Take me oh, back it, to that moment. It was exciting. I started yeah. actually signing copies to, before I even had anyone to give them to. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, it. so one thing is, is when Country Secrets came to came to my house with my author. So I had author copies sent, the ones that say not for resale. Yeah. And I had a specific amount of people that I wanted to have the original author copies. So I signed those and either mailed them out or when I got a chance to see them, handed them to them in person. And to me, that was very exciting. I enjoyed it. I was happy because some of it was the fact of people as I grew up, they just didn't really predict me doing much of anything and other than my family who knew that I was just so bullheaded or so stubborn that I was going to push through with what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So having their support, I wanted to give them something back because I ended up having a mild case of dyslexia, which is kind of the reason that the font that I use for those books are meant more for people to be able to read with dyslexia better. Interesting. So, So I, did that. And then I was always told growing up, like I remember in high school, having a teacher get upset with me and tell me I'm going to be nothing more than a factory worker. And there's nothing wrong with being a factory worker. But one is I'm not, my personality doesn't fit in a factory very well. 
I have friends that work in a factory and they thought that office life would be so easy, so good. And they end up going back to the factory because their personality fits that. Hmm. So factory work is a very valuable part of the country and the people that do it, I admire because I can't, I just, I don't have the patience, the, the ability to sit there and work in a factory. I have to be creative, which is why I end up doing restaurant design work. So with that, the teachers would tell me, I had teachers tell me that because my grades weren't that great, I wouldn't amount to really much of anything. I'll be in a factory. I'll be working some dead end job, things like that. Yeah. And that really, I'm trying to think of the nice way of saying it without using <laughs> some of the words that's coming to mind, but yeah. that really upset me to the point yeah. of I, for several years, even after high school, I pushed myself to be able to do stuff, to be the top person to where I started traveling the country for doing sales. And because of that, I ended up working my way into the office and developed a, a office position where I was the guy doing the inventory control. Nice. So a guy with dyslexia was doing inventory control through yeah. Excel where I had to type hundreds of numbers every day that that was kind of my drive setting point of saying you know if i can do this i can make sure that my dyslexia doesn't really stop me at doing stuff so i started researching how to deal with it and again it wasn't a major um level of dyslexia but it was a mild enough that it did affect me Hmm. So after studying, learning, pushing myself, I learned to live with it and manage to do everything. And because of that, I ended up really pushing myself to become what I am today. So that's kind of what also made me do the things I've done. See, and I love that. I, I it's unfortunate when people come into your life and they tell you all the things you're not good at or what you can't do and what you'll never be. But in a sense, it kind of sparked you to, to chase after and prove them wrong and to prove to yourself that you could do it. And to have three books, Eric is like, that's huge. Like oh, yeah, I'm not an author at all. And you're like just living this dream that you had back with your glass of bourbon and, <laughs> nothing on TV. You've turned that into something that people can enjoy, people can can consume. Like that's incredible for me as a non-author talking to you. I'm so inspired just by your journey to get to these three books to be done and into the world. That's got to be like for you personally, it's got to be kind of like a just a big boost for you to see these come to life. Oh yeah, they were the thrill of each after each one got done and came out after I got him back from the editor who is oddly enough, the grammar Nazi that I ended up dealing with my entire <laughs> life. My mom, okay. she's went through and did the first editing and nice. the majority of the editing for me. And again, grammar Nazi. So she didn't sit there and say, okay, well, this is good. She literally said, what are you trying to say here? This makes no sense. Yeah. So she did the work of what a real editor is supposed to do. She did everything fantastically for me. And she's been a big part. Like I said, family has been horribly supportive for me, yeah. not horribly, but fantastically yeah. supportive of me. And because of that is why I was able to do this is it wasn't, as people think, oh, well, an author, they just sit and they write in a notepad or they type on the keyboard. There's a whole group of, the majority of it is writing that book, getting the story out. But once it's done, you're interacting with people and you're depending on people. It's not just a solo event. There's so much more that people don't see as they get done that is involved in it. That's why, like I said, my family's been a huge portion of making sure I get this done and out. 
Yeah, and I love that you have them in your corner. That's that's amazing, Eric. Um, so we were going to wrap up in a few minutes, Eric. But can you like my, I have authors listening to this podcast from around the world, past a guest, future guests. Mm-hmm. Let's plug your podcast. Like, how we want you want we want to get you some guests for your podcast as well. I know you have you have got a great lineup coming, but I have some other authors that would be great guests for you as well. Here's your chance. Let's pitch oh, it, these authors. Why should they come on Author Blurb? Let's just kind of promote the show a little bit here. Well, just kind of like your show. It's all about the conversation, about the story, about what's behind it, about learning what people are trying to get out, their stories. And like I said, what I do is all about connecting readers and their and the authors. Yeah. So the technical side of it doesn't matter. I know some people like talking about it, but for me, it's all about, basically it's an advertisement that you're doing for free where you have an interview, you're discussing your book. You can take clips from the video. You can do whatever you want with it. And if you ask me for a copy of the video or a copy of the audio, I'm more than happy to share it because it's all about allowing you to be able to use it and be able to expand your readership. And yeah, it's all about connection, about making that, that readership, that author, the writing community, making it all stronger. And I feel like that's what author blurb does. So if anyone wants to come on the show, the website's easy to find it's authorblurb.com. And there's even a little tab that says become a guest. And if you want, you can go through and view the profiles that other authors have made that they've put on there. You can listen to the podcast on the website or find where to listen to it. So you can get a feel of the show. It's also on YouTube rumble. And I think another video platform, but I'm not completely sure off the top of my head. Okay. The show's in India and all over the world. I have it on any, if I'll tell you what, if any of your guests finds a place that the podcast is not on, Shoot me an email and I promise you I'll have it on within a week (laughs) because I have, I think I've found about 30 different locations and that's in a quick search of places I didn't put them on. So the show's everywhere. Excellent. And on top of this, if you're listening, go to Eric's website and again, it links in the show notes, but this is the kind of guy Eric is. He sends me a message earlier today. Hey, I've put a little call out shout out for the living the next chapter podcast on my website to tell everybody to come and check you out this is the kind of guy eric is so um to all my past guests and future guests go check out eric's podcast and sign up with him and let him know that you're interested in being on the podcast he's a true gentleman and i'm happy to have him on to kind of flip the microphone around and have you as a guest instead of a host it's kind of cool and yeah, like um, I, said, I, th- I enjoy it i think we'll have some other podcasts coming up together more conversations beyond this and you know let's uh let's stay in touch eric and and keep in contact because i think um again your support for me has meant a lot to me and again i really enjoy your podcast i really enjoy your guest you're a super host and i just want to encourage you to keep going and keep writing and for all those people that said that you can't do what you can do i see the proof of it it's right here in front of me you can do anything and I'm I'm so happy to have connected with you. So thanks for being part of my podcast. Well, thanks for having me on. And like I said, it's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed your podcasts. You have several of them. So I'm working my way through them. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. I'm definitely planning on coming back, at least on this podcast, if you don't have me on any of the others, because I'm working on two more books. So awesome. once, once those are done, I plan on coming and talking to you again. I love it. I love it, Eric. The door's always open for you. I will never lock the door. Come on back anytime. <laughs> um, and thank you for being you and for encouraging so many people with with your books, but also your podcast and all the things you do for authors. Thank you. you do, you're just a, just a great guy. Really appreciate well, you. Well, thank you. And thank you for your show too. Awesome. Okay, so everybody, so go and check out all the links in the show notes for Eric. Go check out Author Blurb podcast. You can go right from here. Straight over to Author Blurb and continue <laughs> listening to great interviews with great authors hosted by 
Eric as well. So Eric, thanks again for being on the podcast. Thank you. All right. Well, the podcast is over. Thank you for being a part of this episode. If this is your very first episode, welcome to Living the Next Chapter. Uh, you can go back in our catalog. You can see some of the past episodes. But if you want to get a sneak peek of what's coming, you want to jump the line? Uh, yeah, I, gotta, I, got, I got something for you. Go to our YouTube channel. Again, links are in the show notes and on our website, livingthenextchapter.com. And you can go to our YouTube channel and get the most recent episode way before everybody else. So we're putting this at the end of the podcast because we don't want to tell everyone. We don't want to, like, have a stampede, you know. But we're having some great conversations over on our YouTube channel. You're invited. You've been this, you're this far. You're the one listening. You are invited to our YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, go over there and you can see the most up-to-date episodes in real time. Meet you over there. Thanks for listening. Cheers. MindShift Power Podcast, the podcast for teenagers and those who work with them. There's a huge problem in America today. There's a very large disconnect between teenagers and the adults who work with them. I'm looking to bridge that gap with real, raw, honest conversation, not held back by the chains of political correctness. You cannot solve a problem you do not understand. Want to understand teenagers today? Listen to this podcast. This podcast is for teens in the U.S. and Canada. To learn more, go to FatimaBay.com slash podcast, or just look for MindShift Power Podcast on any listening platform. I look forward to you being a faithful listener.